You think you're always gonna remember what's in your jars, but I do find myself forgetting from time to time. So definitely label them. It's really important. Good morning. We are going to can up turkey broth today. And I just wanted to give you guys a little peek into um, how I do this. Now I know in just some of the other videos here, you've kind of seen this um, starting. Good morning, Joe. No, okay. Um, so what I did after Thanksgiving is I put the turkey carcass, you know, after I picked all the meat off of it, I put the turkey carcass back in um, to my Nesco here. This is, I think, a, yes, an 18 quart Nesco. And then I did throw in the turkey neck and I had a whole Ziploc, like a gallon size Ziploc bag of vegetable scraps that I had in the freezer. And there was mainly like onion, skins and bits of onion, the ends of celery, you know, everything had been washed though. It was all clean, but it was just kind of like those scraps. There were even a few stems of broccoli in there. There were some carrot tops, just a variety, maybe even a little bit of pepper, um, you know, just all of it. And so what sodomite. I did... <laughs> what? So, so, so right. It was all right? So, so right. Okay. So I put all of that in here and then I did put in peppercorns and um, some rosemary and I put in, hmm, I believe I put in some thyme and some marjoram and I put in um, a bunch of broken up bay leaves that I had and I've just been cooking this down now for over 48 hours. <laughs> well over 48 hours here by now. And oh, and I filled it all the way up with water. I have not salted this at all, but what I'm gonna do now here is just get this strained. Um, I wanna get all of the bits out of it. So I actually buy my cheesecloth from Grove Collaborative. Um, I, I mean, I'm not an organic purist by any means, but I don't know why I like this, I just do. It's 100% organic, unbleached cheesecloth. I think it's the unbleached part that sells me all the time. I buy unbleached flour, and so I guess I buy unbleached cheesecloth as well. Over here, I have some bowls. I have two glass bowls um, and this big stainless steel soup pot here. My other large stainless steel um, um, bowls are actually being used for uh, venison right now. We are also in the midst of cutting up deer. Uh, we did get Sam's deer cut up already. We still have to get it packaged and we have Sam and yes, Sam. No, we have Amber and Warren's deer yet to cut up today. So we're going to be bouncing, at least I'm going to be bouncing back and forth from this to deer, but I'm just going to line this with cheesecloth and just start filling these all up and then get that uh, put into canning jars. Okay, I have my last strainer full, um, you know, dripping right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let these set here for a little while, let the fat come to the top. I'm gonna skim the fat off, and then we're going to uh, put these into hot sterilized jars. Now, if I had a fat strainer, which I did look for at Walmart, uh, you know, like the day before Thanksgiving, um, I would have picked one up, but I didn't. I've never, I've never used one before, so. I think I am actually going to try to order one from Amazon because I do want to start doing this more often and um, I think it would just make it a whole lot easier. So the premise of a fat strainer is that you don't have to wait for all of the fat kind of to um, almost kind of congeal up on top before scraping it off. You just let it rise to the top and then you strain it or you drain it and the, the broth comes off of the bottom of the of the strainer so you leave the fat behind okay so i'm just gonna let this this one drip for quite a while because i really want that to drip and then um yeah then we'll get this all jarred up all right it's many hours later actually it's about two o'clock now and what what i have going here now and i just 
want to show you guys. Here is one of my bowls of the turkey broth that I already uh, skimmed the fat from. Now you'll see that I put an ice cube in here because what I found works actually pretty well is to drop in that ice cube and then now since this has gotten cold I just sort of work the spoon dragging the top fat close to the um, ice cube and it actually works really well I am going to link though in the description box a um, fat separator because that would have made very very fast work out of this and I wouldn't have had to you know wait around it's been okay because we've been home we've just been cutting up deer and packaging and everything so I you know I was gonna be home doing that so this this wasn't that big of a deal but I would have liked it to go faster and so as you can see now that the fat has gotten cold it just seems to help to bring it together Yes, Maria. Um, yep. This yep, goes right there. So I'm just kind of dragging this back and forth, and the fat just kind of stays. I did actually chill my spoon also, and the fat just kind of wants to attach to the spoon. And then I only take, uh, no, that actually is still dirty. And then I can get the fat off without getting and feeling like I'm wasting too much of the broth. Like I said though, this would have gone way, way faster if I would have had a fat separator because I could have just put it in the fat separator, uh, pulled the like, it's kind of like, like a little handle, you kind of pull in the handle and then it opens the bottom and you can take all of the broth without getting the fat. So I'm just gonna scrape the edge here of the bowl. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to get this all um, put into regular mouth quart jars and then we're just going to um, seal that up. Okay, I have my funnel on here. I'm just going to ladle the broth and I am not salting my broth at all right now. I'll just wait um, because depending on what I use it in, I may want it more of you know a salty base if I'm going to be making like a soup but if I'm not making a soup and I'm just adding it as liquid I may not want it quite as salty so <clears throat> I'm opting to add my salt later I'm going to fill this leaving a full head inch of head space that is the distance from the rim of the jar to the liquid so as you can see I have a whole inch of head space here Everywhere where there would where the uh, screw band would go, that is uh, empty. So I'm going to continue to do that with all of my jars. So let me show you, and then I will just use a moistened paper towel to clean the rim. Place my lid on. Put the band on, and I'm just going to screw this on finger tight, just like that. And once I have all these going for my altitude and everything, I'm going to need to put this at 10 pounds of pressure for 25 minutes. And I'll show that to you in just a little bit. Okay, so I have my canner here. I put two quarts of water inside and then I'm just going to put the jars. So my canner holds seven quarts. I'm only going to put five quarts in here that I'm going to can because the rest of it I'm keeping out so I can make some turkey and wild rice wild rice soup here for supper and um, yeah so I'm just gonna put the, the lid on it is important to inspect your gasket and make sure that you don't have any cracks in your gasket any place I already did that and so I'm just gonna get this on I'm gonna turn this on to high and then I'm just gonna wait for steam to start coming out of here and it has to steam or what they call vent for 10 minutes before we put the weight on. In the meantime, I'm just gonna work on dishes it looks like because <laughs> there we go. That's what it looks like when you've got still working on all the leftover Thanksgiving stuff and, le and cutting up meat and whatever. So I'm gonna work on that and I'll be back when to show you guys the venting in just a few minutes. Okay, I just set my timer for 10 minutes because it is venting 
I think you guys can probably see that. You can also just quick run your hand through and you can feel it um, venting. So 10 minutes and then it's ready to put the weight on. Now my pressure canner has this little weight here. It has holes for 5, 10, and 15 pounds. So I'm just going to set it. That is the 10 pound marking. So in 10 minutes I'll put that on there and then when it jiggles it'll be time to start timing. Okay, so the weight is on, and now we just have to wait for the pressure canner to uh, come up to full pressure, which in this case is 10 pounds. We're going to set the timer for 25 minutes. Okay, that was really fast. I was just going to point out a few things. We're going to turn down the heat. I'm going to set this for 25 minutes. And then what I want is for this um, weight to just kind of jiggle about three to four little rocks. So rock, rock, rock. Wait 15 seconds, rock, 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 wait 15 seconds, rock, 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 rock. Okay, so you just want to kind of do that um, every minute for the full 25 minutes. So it's going to kind of rock back and forth um, a total of about four times each minute. Okay, so as, and at first it rocks a little too much just because it kind of has to uh, settle into its, into its rhythm. I just wanted to mention to you guys, though, just so you know, I'll step back over here. <clears throat> oh, now I'm over by the dishwasher. Okay, so I just wanted to mention to you guys that you don't have to can up the turkey stock. Uh, it's just as easy to put it into some kind of container and then with a lid, you know, label it and put it into the freezer. You just have to remember to thaw it in advance if you are going to want to use it. So that's my only thing is that I like the canned goods because then it's just ready to go. I pop the lid and, um, and I can use it right away <laughs> because as you guys know, I'm forever forgetting to take things out of the freezer to thaw in enough time. So, okay, I want this to slow down here. We're going to turn the heat just a teeny bit more down. If you are going to freeze it, do uh, leave a head space so that um, as it expands when it freezes, it doesn't, you know, blow the top off and make a mess in your uh, freezer, okay? I know. It's been 25 minutes. The timer just went off. I immediately turned the heat off, but I'm going to keep my canner in one spot here. Uh, you really don't want to move your canner uh, as soon as you know right when it's done you want to give it time for the pressure to come down and never ever touch the weight right now because if I touch that steam will quickly quickly erupt from there and that could cause your jars to break uh, so it's really important to just let this have a natural cool down and that could take depending on you know what the like what the food is that's in there how thick it is how many jars you have in here it's going to take longer or shorter depending on that. So I have five jars. I have a fluid. You know, it's a liquid. So I don't think it's going to take a long time. Maybe 20 minutes. So at 20 minutes, I'm just going to come back. I'm going to give this just a quick little tap at 20 minutes and see if a little steam pops out. Then I know I need to let it go longer. So that's uh, that's where we're at here. Peter just came in. Can I? Can you bring me some coloring pages? Oh my goodness, coloring pages. No, not right now, because right now we're working in the kitchen here, okay? So, yep, we've got meat, and Peter just helped me grind the last of it. Can Amber was my big helper. Nope, nope. Alrighty, so I'm just going to test this. No steam is popping out, so I'm going to take that off. And then always, always open your canner away, because it still will be very hot, and there still will be steam. <laughs> I just put out a double layer towel here. Uh oh. I can. I see I had a little problem. Mom, I can. You can have an apple. Take one quick without bumping. Wait, I think I bumped it. That's a okay. Little. Okay. I think the tape kind of ripped. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to lift out my jars here. Did you hear that little pop? That means that it's sealing quickly but I do see that I have a problem <laughs> I have a cracked jar and I will show that to you in just a second here so here is the beautiful turkey broth and look at what I opened up to so what happened here is I must have had a hairline crack in this jar that I missed I did inspect my jars I always hold them up to the light but there must have been a hairline crack and so I'll show you. When I first opened this, it was about half full, and 
as the pressure was releasing, it all leaked out, and there is my jar. And there is the bottom of it. I will just dump all of that. <laughs> now these jars will have to get washed up. That's really important because you don't want uh, to get sticky jars. I'm gonna let these set for 24 hours and then I will label them 2019 and turkey broth. And that is really it for canning turkey broth. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time with something else from A Country Life.